A while back, Laowa stirred the pot when they announced a rear anamorphic adapter for their OOM 25-100 T2.9 Cine lens. Their adapter has finally been released and it's time we take a look at it. It was challenging to write this episode as I couldn't figure out what's the real reason this adapter exists. But what even is rear anamorphic? What are its advantages and limitations? Let's take a look. Hey friends, Chitta Fahadungs here with some insights on Laowa's rear anamorphic adapter and rear anamorphics in general. As I've said in the cookbook, link up here, up here, there are three types of anamorphics, front, middle, and rear anamorphics. But only front anamorphics give that look that people want when we talk about anamorphics. Rear anamorphics don't give you the look at all. And this was the reason why they became so popular in the 1970s and 80s. If you remember the origin of anamorphic, uh, as we talked about in module one of the cookbook, the idea was to transform the experience of going to the theater, but change as little as possible behind the scenes. Continue using the same cameras, projectors, film sizes, and technology already available at the time. This was in the early 1950s, and the change in aspect ratio was a winning feature. Decades later, filmmakers are starting to use computer-generated imagery, or CGI, to enhance their stories. And guess what? Computers do not love what anamorphic fronts do to the image. There are just too many organic qualities and unusual distortions going on. So filmmakers start to wonder, how can we continue to make widescreen pictures and use all of the film area without the distortions and artifacts introduced by front anamorphics? These are also the decades when big zooms became popular and entire lens sets would be replaced by one super versatile zoom. So someone came up with the idea of squeezing the image at the back of the lens. It turns out this has almost no side effects on the pictures besides compression itself. No crazy distortion, no flares, no oval bokeh. Nothing that we recognize as the anamorphic look. So at the time, DPs and CGI artists loved it. These rear anamorphics offered a two-time squeeze and worked in combination with the most popular zooms available. We're talking Cook, Ingenieur, and the likes of 25 to 250 focal lengths. These rear anamorphics were made by various brands and are still rare and expensive to this day. A rear anamorphic adapter is a weird beast in the sense that it works as a tele-extender because it makes you lose some light and introduces more distance between the back of the lens and the sensor. But it also compresses the image sort of acting like a focal reducer to give you more field of view. But this rear compression only works because the image circle of the spherical lens is large enough to be squeezed onto the sensor. If the image circle was tightly limited to the Super 35 millimeter format, adding a rear adapter would only compress that image and add black on the sides. The OOM itself has an image circle that is slightly larger than Super 35, so adding a rear adapter permits you to squeeze that extra area onto the Super 35 format. Although the adapter was designed for the OOM, it can also work with other PL mounted lenses as long as they fit in there. The lens mounts into the adapter and this goes into your camera. I managed to mount this on the back of my Photon A for some deeply disturbing results. On Laowa's website, you can download and print a clearance checker for verifying if the adapter is compatible with your PL lenses. You can also find a list of compatible lenses on there, featuring many popular zooms and Zeiss CP series. For background, Laowa wanted to make an anamorphic zoom, which is a rare thing still. 
but front anamorphic zooms get crazy expensive and heavy real fast. So they decided to take their already existing all-rounder parfocal oom lens and give it a widescreen back. I've heard many times that using a zoom lens when you're not planning on doing any zoom during a shot is lazy filmmaking, but I disagree. Being able to choose exactly what focal length you want by sliding a dial lets you organically find your framing and feel out what kind of perspective works best for the story you're telling. For run and gun, carrying one bigger lens rather than five smaller ones can make you more agile and grab shots you might otherwise miss during lens switches. Again, rear anamorphics do not create what we call the anamorphic look. It doesn't give you over bouquet. It doesn't create streak flares. The flares change a little bit when compared to flares created without the adapter, but nothing like a streak shows up. And when paired with the oom, the rear anamorphic ends up narrowing our field of view on a 35 millimeter sensor. We lose a little bit on the sides and a fair amount on the top and bottom, along with light transmission. So what are the advantages of actually using it. The 1.33 squeeze factor is mild, but compatible with 16 by nine sensors, outputting an almost cinemascope aspect ratio straight out of the box. But is it enough to compensate for the loss in field of view? I appreciate that the rear anamorphic doesn't mess with the oom being par focal. And even if it did, Lao includes shims and instructions with the kit to adjust the performance in case things go sideways. Speaking of sideways, you also get markings to realign squeeze if you ever decide to do that. Using the adapter changes your maximum T-stop and focal lengths. So Lawa has included a switch on the ooms barrel that allows you to rotate the cutouts and reveal a different set of markings to match the rear anamorphic settings, with T-stop starting at four and focal length range from 35 to 140 millimeters. It's a small detail, but one that goes highly appreciated. The adapter can be mounted both vertically or horizontally, allowing you to squeeze the image in either direction. Mounting it vertically lets you have a virtually taller sensor and definitely not standard operation. Maybe something you can use to facilitate for more square and vertical aspect ratios. The rear anamorphic adapter can be purchased separately for $1,000 or it can be paired with the full frame 1.4 times expander for 1800 bucks. It's definitely not a super cheap add-on with the OOM itself costing $5,000. I'm having a hard time figuring out how this fits in the anamorphic market though. And who is it aimed at? We're missing the main traits of the anamorphic look and getting just the squeeze. Looking at the oom itself, I can get it to cover full frame from about 55 millimeters and up, giving me a much more interesting look than the Super 35 crop. I get massive vignetting on the wider end, but bear with me. Let's say I'm looking to get a zoom lens and a cine light camera to upgrade my current rig. My budget is enough to get the oom, the anamorphic mm -hmm. rear, and a Panasonic GH5 with a micro four thirds sensor. But if I part with the adapter, that frees up a thousand bucks on my budget. And with that money, I can bump up my camera to the Panasonic S1, which is full frame and offers open gate recording, giving me a whole new class of sensor size and what I would argue is a vastly superior image, even if I simply crop out the vignette. Now, if you're perfectly happy with your Super 35 camera though, and you just want to use the entire sensor area without cropping in post, Lawa's rear anamorphic will not degrade your original image quality. There's some merit there as you're getting a special aspect ratio without cropping, plus you keep the sharpness and character of the oom 
or whatever other lens you decide to pair with it. What are your thoughts about this thing? Any crazy ideas coming to mind? I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And before you head out, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the perks of becoming a member. There are lots of early access videos and rewards. I hope you learned something cool here today and I'll see you again soon. Chitta for headings, out.